Hi everyone, welcome back to Rose Stops Buying Stuff. I'm not going to go on in this intro, I'm just going to warn you, get a drink, settle in. I think this is going to be quite a long one. We've got a declutter. This is most of the makeup that I've worn since my last declutter. So we've got palettes here and then this box is stuffed full of stuff to consider. So yeah, let's just um, not waffle and get on into it. Okay, first item up for consideration is this Dior face palette. Now, I really, really like all the products in this, but what I don't like about this is the layout. So these like small pans that are like triangular are quite difficult to use. Design-wise, it looks beautiful, but it's not easy to use and I just don't reach for it enough. I'm not the biggest fan of face palettes, I've realised. I think they're a great idea in theory and I'm like, that would be so brilliant for travelling and then particularly this one because it's those quite fun colours. It, it, I just don't. The, the face palette that I take is my MAC Rebecca Moses one if I am taking a face palette and it's specifically because it's neutral so it does for kind of everything. I feel like if I was to take this palette travelling which is what a face palette is good for I would end up packing a whole load of other stuff as well as this. The products are really lovely like I really like the palette but I'm just not getting my use out of it, so I'd rather pass it on for somebody else to cherish and get more use of than me. I'm going to keep all four of these, so I won't talk for too long about them. This is my Benefit Cheek Parade palette. I do really, really like this. Hula is a little too dark for me, but the other four shades are brilliant and I will continue to use them. This has already been reckoned with in an earlier declutter, um, so you've seen it already. It's the Nabla. Secret palette, it did get put away, but Lauren and I both have this palette, so we took it out to do a palette bingo with. So in case you don't remember it from last time, this is what this palette looks like. It is probably my favourite palette of the moment. I absolutely adore it, um, and I'm definitely, definitely keeping it. I also have used all the products within this Elsa box, so that's a glitter, a lipstick, palette and a lip gloss. So they have all been used, so they're all up for consideration, but I'm definitely keeping this whole box. I've also got the Anna one. You saw that in my last declutter and I'm definitely not not going to part with with this collection. It's obviously it's quite a recent collection as well so we're, we've, we're not there with that collection. And another collection I'm not there with is this which was the Too Faced Christmas in New York which was their Christmas. So that's what the box looks like um, but this is the palette within the box. This got really mixed reviews but mine has always been absolutely fine and I really like it and I really like the theming. Christmas in New York is just my favourite time in New York um, and I, I love Christmas. I've talked about this before. I, I'm one of those people that's literally annoying to other people with how much they love Christmas. This whole theme is just the most me thing so I'm definitely definitely keeping this. Let's get into the contents of this box because I'm fairly sure there will be things I'm not keeping in here. I am going to keep this, it's the NYX Strobe Genius Illuminating Palette, that is what that one looks like. I like face palettes in terms of palettes that are all face products, it's when I say face palettes that I don't reach for, I mean palettes that have you know your full face in them as such. So I'm definitely keeping this. Next up I've got these two Dior Quints, so these were from the same collection. I can't remember what the overall collection was called but this one is called Parisian Sky and this one is called Capital of Light. Parisian Sky is this beautiful neutral palette with this, it looks really bright blue but it's really not, it's quite kind of silvery blue and quite subtle when you actually swatch it out. So I used this and I absolutely loved it. I'm definitely keeping this one. I feel like one of the things that I have been really bad for in the past is you can see the Eiffel Tower embossing in this and like you can see it's starting to wear away in these three shades in particular and I don't like it when there's embossing that starts to wear away and it sort of puts me off using products because I almost want to start preserving them. So that's something I'm going to try and be more aware of not keeping things because of that. Then the other quint that I've got is the Capital of Light one. Again you can see it's that same Eiffel Tower embossing. And again it's a fairly neutral quad but it's got the purple but I used this and I'm gonna be honest I don't I don't think this is the right shade of purple for me. I think purple is a colour I need to be really careful with. I'm super pale, I have really bad under eye circles. Well they're not even really bad but I think my skin is so transparent and so pale that there's no pigmentation in my skin to cover the veins and things underneath which is I think why mine look worse than a lot of other people's and I've also got quite a sunken eye shape so 
it's a thing I have to be very very careful of and I just kind of feel this shade of purple really sort of emphasised it. It's very very close as a shade of purple to my under eye um, circles. The other shades in it are just they are beautiful but they're beautiful neutrals that I definitely own elsewhere so I'm gonna pass that one on. Okay I am definitely keeping this to so this is another Too Faced um, Christmas product and it is their Gingerbread Man liquid lipstick. I absolutely love this so definitely holding on to that. This was a combination that I wore and it is MAC Vino Lip Pencil which I'm definitely keeping but I wore it with this NYX liquid suede in the shade we'll put it on. Now that is what this liquid lipstick looks like and it's a really deep purple so it's not a black however again because my skin is so pale I think after a certain point of darkness lipsticks all kind of start to look the same in me and this looked near enough black when I had it on but I have a black liquid lipstick so I don't feel that I should keep this and that one and I've had a few of these and I know that the ones that I've had, a lot of them have started to go quite patchy and things. This one hasn't yet, but it will soon enough and it probably will before I get working through my entire collection this year and get back around to using this again, particularly because we are now wearing face coverings, which is probably going to impact the amount of times that I wear lipstick for the rest of the year. So I'm going to pass this on before it goes patchy and turns um, because I can get the effect that I got from this from other dark lipsticks that I own. And then over the top I used this Chanel lip gloss in the shade 487 which is really really lovely. Beautiful gold shimmer through it. What I did find with this is that when I put this over the top that started to disrupt the liquid lipstick underneath it. Like these lip suede's don't really seem to mix well with other products but I do absolutely love this lip gloss so I'm keeping those two products out of that combo. I'm going to keep my two Glossier Play liners so this is the yellow one which is the shade Nectar which is just really fun and then this shade is Early Girl so I am going to keep those two and I'm going to get rid of these two. So these were the two liners that I wore the day that I wore that Dior Quint with the NYX liquid lipstick. So this is a Smashbox one which I wore on my waterline and then I wore this on the lash line. This is kind of like that prime thing where they're nice and there's nothing wrong with them but they're just not anything particularly special. I've got other purple eyeliners and it gets to a point where you really don't need three or four purple eyeliners so I'm going to pass these two on. Got a couple of blushes here which I'm going to be honest I'm going to keep all of these. Yep, okay so let's just go through these. This is a Benefit Sugar Bomb which is so old it's in like the old packaging before these were like, hinged um, but I do really like this one. I like that you can kind of mix it and put different emphasis on each side so I'm going to keep it until it actually seems to go off even though it by all intents and purposes should have done already because it's so ancient but I'm keeping it for now. This is MAC Gingerly which is a really nice sort of neutral blush if you're doing so I wore this the day that I wore the Too Faced Melted Matte Lipstick and I had a yellow eyeshadow on that day so this is like just a nice neutral blush for days when the rest of your makeup's quite strong. I'm also going to keep a hold of this Max Factor blush in the shade Lavish Mauve, which is, again, it's quite neutral but in a, in a different shade of neutral. So I'm going to keep that. Max Stubborn is not neutral at all, but I absolutely love it. It's a beautiful deep plummy blush. So I'm definitely keeping that one. And then this like definitely has expired and it's a cream blush that I have hit pan on. It's a bit wet because I actually sanitised it before I shot it over and put it in here. Packaging's broken so I'm like fully kind of waiting for this blush to go off. The truth is told it probably will go off before I get back round to it but I absolutely love this blush. It's just so pretty. It's such a beautiful peachy shade. I'm really interested in the new Patrick Ta blushes and perhaps if I got one of them for my birthday. If I got that and it was kind of compatible shade wise I might say goodbye to this one. This is Illamasqua Rude by the way, I realise I've not said that. But I do really really like this blush so I'm going to keep a hold of it for now. In this pouch is lipsticks I have already considered in previous declutters and have saved. Um, so I've just pulled them out because I want to compare Yash. So I wore this lipstick which is from the Seattle Olivia Palermo collection. 
um, and this is in the shade Cashmere. Now I really liked this lipstick. I feel like it's the same kind of idea as Yash and I just wanted to compare the two of them before I decide to keep both. They are actually different but they're they're so similar even though they're I feel like they look exactly the same on camera. They are like very closely related. They're slightly different but I don't think I can justify keeping both and I really like Yash, it's newer in my collection. So I'm gonna I'm going to keep Yash and I'm going to declutter this one from the Olivia Palermo collection, even though I love Olivia Palermo, so that makes me a bit sad, but yeah, there's no way that I need both those shades in my collection. It's just that would just be a bit ridiculous. So I'm gonna say goodbye to this one. The next lipstick that I've got for consideration is Max Day Curious, which is a really, really pretty lipstick, a beautiful neutral that I'm definitely, definitely keeping. And another MAC lipstick that I'm definitely keeping, so this is reasonably new. My gran bought me two lipsticks from this collection as a gift at the start of lockdown, which was so lovely over. Um, so this is the shade Can Do, which I just absolutely adore and I love its Can Do as in like, as in Can the Place, so I do love a good pun name. So yeah, that's that one there and I'm definitely, definitely keeping that. Uh, this is the Bourjois number no. 7, which I really like, but actually now I'm a bit like, is it? No, it is different to... I thought this might be similar to Stay Curious, but I think they are different enough to keep both, so I'm going to keep that. I'm going to keep this lip liner from Makeup Forever, so this is their Artist Colour Pencil in the shade Whatever Walnut. So that's what that looks like and I'm going to keep a hold of that just now. This is something I am not going to keep hold of is the Becca Liquid Highlighter in the shade Opal. It's just too dark for me. It's not a highlighter on my skin. <laughs> you can see that. That is not a highlight on me. Um, and I'd been like, I don't know why I'd been like trying to use it up and mixing it into my foundations and all this stuff and I've just got to a point where I'm like it's it's not worth it for the sake of like whatever I get like five dollars or something towards my reverse rouge total I'd be as well just passing this on and somebody else can use it if they want to. I have got another one of these Stila um so these are the shimmering glows not the glittering glows this is the shade Kitten um but as you can kind of see it's quite dried up so I'm actually just going to put that in the bin rather than passing it on. This is a blush actually. So this is the NARS blush in the shade Gulu, which is a really, really pretty sort of plummy one. That's what that looks Oh, Let me check that against. So this is Stubborn by MAC, which I love. Let me just swatch these side by side. Can I keep both? What do we reckon? Like, they are different, but also are they that different once they're on the cheek? Probably not. I think I'll keep the MAC one and I'll pass the NARS one on. This is NARS Hot Sand Highlighter, which I am keeping. Um, so it's a gold highlighter, but it's a really, really pretty one. I also think I might actually hit pan in this at some point, which would be very exciting. So you can see the difference between that as a highlighter and... So that's Beko Opal and that's NARS Hot Sand. So yeah, keeping this because I absolutely love it. Definitely keeping the Colourpop Just My Luck palette. Love green, so this is just an ideal palette for me. And oh, there we go. Speaking of the, the one face palette that I do actually use, this is the MAC Rebecca. I'd actually forgotten when I said that that this was in this because it's taken me so long to get around to filming this. So this is the interior of this palette. So the products that are in this are... The blush is Melba, then the eyeshadows are Orb, Smoked Sepia, All That Glitters and Showstopper, and then the lipsticks are Ravishing and Myth. Um, I don't really use the lipsticks, if the truth be told, but I do like this blush and these eyeshadows, and I would actually take this palette travelling, and I have taken it travelling. It's really old, I don't even want to look up when this collection was, um, because it's, it definitely should be, should be gone, and I probably should actually put this in some kind of project and try and like hit pan and use it up and move it out but I love this palette. It's, it's the only face palette that I can honestly say I do use so I'm definitely keeping a hold of that one. Cleaned my hand off for the second time. Um, I'm definitely keeping a hold of 
this which is a Marc Jacobs blush. I love these blushes. This one is the shade Lines and Last Nights, the sort of peachy one and I wore that I believe when I did the green eye look with the with this Colourpop palette. I'll swatch this because I like it so much. So that's the deeper peach shade and then it's got these this lighter shade. So again similar to that Benefit blush you can kind of control how much of each shade you get by going in kind of heavier at one end or the other um, or you can kind of almost use this shade as like your blush and this shade's a bit of highlight or you can just swirl them so if you swirl them all together you get this kind of shade which is what I do most often is mix them together um, but I just I absolutely love these Marc Jacobs blushes. I feel like the Marc Jacobs beauty line in general is just so underrated, so underhyped. I have loved everything I've had from the Marc Jacobs line um, so yeah, but the blushes in particular are so so good. I love them. I've got two and I really, like in my fantasy makeup collection I would have all the Marc Jacobs blushes and you know that would cover all my bases and it would just be great and I would never need another blush until obviously someone released one that I liked and then I'd be like no I'm just gonna add this one in because I'm never gonna have this super streamlined fantasy makeup collection that I have in my head because what I want in my head and what I want in my actual reality are not the same and that's something I'm kind of trying to come to terms with but yeah if I was starting from scratch if all my makeup was lost in a fire and I had to build a makeup collection from the start I would get the Marc Jacobs blushes and then see if I needed any more from there colour wise because I love them. This is another product that I'm not going to keep it's the Becca highlighter in Opal again but it's the pressed one now this is a little bit fragile um, and I've been keeping this and using it as an eyeshadow and again it's just it's it is really pretty like it is absolutely beautiful but it's, as, again as you can see that is not a highlight shade on me. It's really really pretty and it is a lovely eyeshadow but I have so many actual eyeshadows that keeping a hold of a highlighter that is too dark to be a highlighter on me for the purpose of using it as an inner corner eyeshadow is just ridiculous so I'm going to pass that on. Something I'm definitely keeping is my Urban Decay Game of Thrones collection lipstick. This is in the shade Sansa which if you don't know if you're new to my channel um, my cat is called Sansa. She's a little ginger cat and this is a nice it's not a ginger lipstick at all, it's a very peachy nude lipstick, but Sansa was one of my like favourite characters, obviously, on the show, but I wouldn't have named my cat after her. And I just, I love this collection, I love the show, and I definitely, definitely will always keep hold of this lipstick. Even probably if I finished it up, I would keep a hold of the packaging. Um, it's still in the box, very rarely do I keep things in the box, but this is one of them. So next product up for consideration is this from number 7, it's their Pop and Glow Cream Blush. That's what that one looks like. It's a really, really pretty, again, quite neutral blush. I'm going to actually just swatch that against this. I do think these are very different though because this is like much more mauve -y. as much as it's a neutral blush. Like, I feel like it sounds ridiculous saying like there's loads of different shades of neutral blush but but there is, clearly. So there's that. I've also got the Urban Decay Fetish Blush here. Um, let's just swatch that in two. And I feel like the three of them are very different. So keeping the three of them just like, oh, I've got a Burberry Blush, Burberry Blush in number two, Light Glow, which is this pinky shade. I don't have a lot of Burberry makeup but I really, again, really like the things that I do have. And again, it's not a very talked about brand. So that is that one there. I feel like the four of them are different so I'm going to justify holding on to all four of these after checking them but I've checked them. That's the main thing. I've got three more lip liners and I'm going to keep a hold of, I'm definitely keeping a hold of this one which is the Dior 943 um, Thrilling Plum. That one which is a nice dark one, then I get Max Soar, which is actually, do you know I always think about Max Soar as being super pinky but it's actually much darker than I give it credit for. And then I've got a Maybelline Colour Sensational in the shade 140 Intense Pink. So those are the three lip liners and I'm going to keep a hold of all three of them. I 
eyeliners. That is the Olivia Palermo one, which I am going to keep hold of since I got rid of the Stila one. I have got a couple of eye crayons here. So I've got two by Terry ones. The shades are number five and number six. So number five is Misty Rock. Such a pretty shade. And number six is Frozen Quartz. I really do really like these by Terry shadow sticks so I'm definitely definitely keeping both of them. I really like shadow sticks in general. I just find they're such a convenient formula um, and this one is from NARS and it is the shade Ceros and spoiler alert I will be keeping this one too. This was actually used on Emma Stone at the Oscars the year that she wore um, NARS Mona lipstick and basically Rachel Goodwin who's her makeup artist put on Instagram all the products that she used and I went out and bought them all um, and I do actually I love them all I don't have any regrets over doing that even though it is definitely an example of the way that I used to shop and how impulsive I was and like how I would buy full looks you know without really thinking about it but this one worked out in my favour so yeah I'm keeping all three of them. Some things I'm definitely not keeping are from Bite um, so I don't know if you guys will remember but a little while ago I seemed to sort of develop a reaction to the Bite Lip Balm or the Bite Lip Mask and I had been using these products, had had no issue with them and then it was like I just developed an allergy and I went and I wore Truffle one day which I absolutely love, I think it's a beautiful beautiful shade and my lips took the same reaction even though I'd worn this before, had no problems with it it's like I've just developed an intolerance to something in these products. Um, so because of that I've just decided to get rid of these. So this is the Bite Lipstick in the shade Chai. It's just a little mini one. So that was in the Sephora Birthday Gift along with this I believe. Which is the um, stick formula in the shade Glassy. So that is... That is Chai and Glassy and Truffle. I've got Freeze which I wore this in Disneyland Paris and I just have nice memories attached to it but again it's just I seem to suddenly be allergic to them and ugh, red velvet I mean I'm I'm gutted about these two reds because I love them both very very much I think they're very very beautiful shades um but yeah I just seem to have developed an allergy to bite products so I'm getting rid of these five then I also get this from Bite, but this is actually, I use this on my cheeks, it's one of their multi-sticks. And this is in the shade Praline, a really, really beautiful sort of gingerbread colour. And you can just kind of... swatched it quite heavily, so it's even blended out, it's still quite pigmented, but you can kind of really build it up or make it quite sheer. And I don't seem to have any issues in my face when I use this, it's just my lips, but it's... All the skin around my lips as well goes really dry and chapped. It's really not not a good situation. Um, but so far my cheeks seem fine. So I'm going to keep hold of this for my cheeks. Okay, we are nearing the end of the box. So I've got the Bam Mary Lou Luminizer, which is a beautiful highlight that I'm definitely... I'm sure you've all seen this a million times, but definitely keeping a hold of that one. Still a black liquid liner. I'm going to keep this for now. I don't use a lot of liquid liner but I don't own a lot of them because of that so I will keep this for now I think. Lip liner, this is the Kevna Kwan. It's just in the shade medium so that is what that one looks like. Wait till I actually I'm just going to swatch the makeup for everyone next to it to make sure that I'm not, you know, they're quite different. Again I feel like sometimes in camera things don't look that different but in real life they do and these definitely do look different so I will be keeping both of them. Three lipsticks here, so the first one is Marc Jacobs Charlotte which is just a really beautiful pink shade. I absolutely love this, it's one of my favourite lipsticks and again as I've said Marc Jacobs is such an underrated beauty, beauty brand um, but this shade is just one of my favourite shades in my collection. Then I've got Nars Bet, oh this is so beautiful look at that. Isn't that just one of the most perfect shades you've ever seen? Absolutely love it. Definitely keeping this one. Um, and then this is another one of the Ciate Olivia Palermo um, collection lipsticks. This is in the shade Praline and it's another neutral. I feel like again if I want a neutral 
I would go for MAC Yash, um, which is a completely different, wait till I get it back out, so it's a completely different type of neutral, but I feel like Yash is more neutral than this, whereas I feel like this has got more of a sort of mauve tone to it that actually makes it a stronger colour, whereas if I want a neutral lip, I want the lip to be the background. So yeah, I'm going to get rid of this one. That's two of my Olivia Palermo lipsticks away, that's really sad. So we're down to the last three products. Don't feel like this is actually taking as long as I thought it would. So I've got this Bourjois Quad, which is really nice, just neutral tones, super easy to wear, so I'm going to keep hold of that for now. I've got this Dior Single Eyeshadow in the shade Reflection. So there was like embossing here and the shadows like worn differently around the embossing than it has where there wasn't embossing, um, but it's a really really pretty shade. It's actually like, I basically have to sellotape this almost pretty much every time I use it because it's really hard panny, but it is such a lovely shade, so I'm definitely, definitely keeping that. And last is another Dior um, single shadow. This is one of their pot ones, the Dior Show Fusion Monos. This is the shade 631 Blazing. So this was from a Christmas collection a few years ago now. It's an incredibly pretty. Like shimmery gold shade. So beautiful, so I'm gonna keep that. Okay, so empty box, yay. So this is my keep pile and this is my going pile. So I know I keep more than I could ever need to keep and I know that my keeping is always way more than my decluttering, but you know, progress is progress. A few years ago I hoarded everything, so I'm glad that I am doing these and I'm glad that I am finding things to declutter and I feel like I'm getting better every time, so. I've decluttered 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 items. 16 items isn't too bad. Let me count how many we're keeping. So we're keeping 1, 2, 3, then this has got 4 products in it, so 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, Okay, so that's 11 in that little pile. I'm just going to add this blush to that pile to make it 12. So 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47. So we're keeping 47, getting rid of 16, 47 and 16. So if I started with around 60 items, just over 60 items, I've actually gotten rid of a quarter, so... That's not so bad, that's 25%. I'm quite happy with that actually. So I hope you've enjoyed watching this. Thank you very much for doing so and I will speak to you in my next video. Bye.